Hello, you're watching Tell It Like It Is, and my name's Kathy Bennick. You know, in a town the size of Bedford, there's never a shortage of controversies. And some debates stay very quiet, others get a little more spirited. But frankly, there's been one issue here in Bedford that I'm kind of surprised at all the controversy that it's drawn. And that's the issue of whether or not Bedford will build a dog park. Which probably would explain why I have a friend sitting here. And actually, I'd like to introduce Marty. Marty is from Fremont. And he is actually here today as a show of solidarity for the dogs in Bedford. Um, now, in the interest of full disclosure, I do have to admit that I do have a connection to Marty. I guess I would have to say he is my grand puppy because he belongs to one of my sons, my son Bill, in fact. And Marty often comes over to Grandma's in Bedford for sleepovers. So he is kind of excited because he thinks that he'll probably get to go to the dog park in Bedford if one ever opens. And he hangs out at a whole lot of dog parks over around the seacoast area, thinks they're great fun, and thinks this would be a wonderful opportunity to come and meet some new friends in Bedford. So this is why he's here. And you'll see he kind of got dressed for the occasion. He's a little excited with all the TV lights and cameras, but he does have a tuxedo on. Anyway, that's my nonsense for today. To so get back to the dog park, back in 2007, whoops, Marty decided he'd go take a walk and look around the studio. That's okay. He can't get in any trouble here. Back in 2007, the town council appointed a dog park subcommittee. And so for the past four years, these folks have been meeting and kind of grappling with all of the issues that go on to get a dog park open. And I know some of you who follow all the news probably know that the city of Manchester just opened one just in the past few days from the time that we're taping the show. Anyway, um, the subcommittee looked at many, many different sites and finally arrived at what they thought would be the perfect site for Bedford. And that is the location on Nashua Road, town-owned property, and it is adjacent to the Riley Field Complex and would actually be right across the street on Nashua Road from Norman Doe Associates. So once they felt as though they had actually honed in on where this would be the perfect spot, um, they went back and in March appeared before the Park and Recreation Commission told them all of their findings, all their rationale for this location and such, and the commission subsequently made a positive recommendation to the town council that that should be the site. So then the dog park subcommittee um, did a whole very lengthy presentation at the town council meeting in May, followed then in June by a presentation before the town planning board. And for the town planning board, just for those who are watching and may not know, um, does not have authority as such to either uh, move it forward or hold it up. They simply can make a recommendation to the council. So in any event, um, the night of the council meeting, as I said, there was a very lengthy presentation. And at that time was when the opposition came out. And the opposition primarily consisted of residents of Pinecrest Drive. Now, Pinecrest Drive is not visible uh, from the area where the dog site will be. In fact, it's not visible at all from anywhere in Riley uh, Field Complex. It's not visible from Nashua Road. Um, for those of you who don't know where it is, it's up at the other side of the hill and very wooded area that runs down into Nashua Road that probably a lot of people just like me often wondered who it belonged to. Well, that is town land. And interesting because I counted on the property records 27 houses on Pinecrest Drive. And one of the residents actually testified that there were 23 dogs coming from the 27 houses. Yet the folks in that neighborhood are very, very much opposed to the dog park. And we will be getting into uh, some of the reasons with my guests today. Now, I don't know if all of you have watched my show more than once, but my very first show, I said that any issue that I brought up, I would do everything possible to have both sides of the issue represented. And the pro side of the dog park is going to be represented today, and it will be represented by none other than Town Council and Norm Longville, who has worked very, very hard on this whole issue. 
As far as the Pinecrest uh, Drive neighborhood people, I also tried to get them on the show. And let me just say this. Over the course of the past few weeks, I didn't approach them once, not twice, not three times, not even four times. I actually approached them five times over the course of the past few weeks. And you should know that I also offered them the opportunity that this would not be a debate today, but that the show would be evenly divided between both the pro-dog park folks and the con dog park folks, so that each of them could state their case fully um, without having to engage or use their time in, in a debate situation with their opposition. Um, the Pinecrest folks decided not to be here, so we will carry on without them. And uh, obviously, we'll have lots of time to talk about all of the good reasons for a dog pack. Having said that, though, Norm and I will also bring up the major opposition, as it has been stated so far, uh, by the folks in Pinecrest. So that'll be our issue today, and Norm should be here any second now. He probably was kind of wise to hold off till we introduced Marty, because Marty is very excited because his human daddy is off on the other side of the studio and he really wants to go join him. Um, but anyway, here he comes back again and Marty, thanks so much for coming with us today. And the dogs in Bedford, thank you. And maybe you'll get to meet them all sometime soon at the dog park. Okay, hang on just a second and we'll get Norm in here. Norm, thanks so much for being here today. I know you have a wicked schedule between being a business owner and all the council and subcommittee obligations, and I know you really had to scramble to try to fit this into that schedule. So thanks. Oh, thank you for having me. And uh, yes, I did have to scramble, but uh, it's a pleasure being here with you and being able to discuss this dog park situation here in, in the community. You know, I know that you've been involved in this from, I guess, the get-go, so why don't you kind of give the audience a little bit of the background leading up to now? Sure. Um, back in uh, 07, I believe it was, uh, we were approached by some in the community, and at a town council meeting, uh, the mention of a dog park came up, and I was the chairman of the, uh, not chairman, but I was the liaison to the Parks and Recreation Committee, mm -hmm. and of course, they gave me the project of trying to locate a location here in town where we could set up a dog park in the community. And uh, we did look at five different places, and unfortunately all five of them um, weren't doable for one reason or another, and I don't want to go into that because we'd be here right. eating up the clock right. for nothing. But that's pretty much how it started. And uh, since with that it has started, uh, we've gone through <clears throat> five chairmen, I believe it is, and four committees. Wow. People just got discouraged because of one you know, thing after another that it didn't seem feasible. We couldn't do it for a variety of reasons that came up depending on where the location was. Mm -hmm. And then finally we, uh, we, we landed on uh, Nashville Road right across from the Mandel Properties and it seemed like the, you know, the ideal place to have a dog park because the land as it sits uh, has very little or no use for much of anything else the way that it's situated. Mm -hmm. There is some ledge there uh, which we don't plan on touching. Uh, there's also uh, some trees that uh, uh, most of which are going to leave standing there. Uh, we want to make a barrier so that sound is minimal. Sure. And we're also going to leave trees alongside of the road so that dogs won't be barking at cars going by and oh, things of yeah, that, that nature. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. And aesthetically, right. it'll be nice for the dog owners. Yes, well, definitely, definitely. And we're planning on having a 16-car parking lot, mm -hmm. uh, which is going to have three parking spaces for the handicap. That's uh, more than what's necessary, but we feel there are many people in this town that probably uh, cannot get around that well, and it's only fair that we do it that way. Mm -hmm. And uh, that'll be a big plus, I think, for people who have difficulty walking to the park. Um, the park itself, uh, as you look at it, um, to your left, you have this uh, hill that like, goes up approximately some 60 feet in the air. And the sound, if it were to hit that, I'm assuming anyway for the most part, that it would just bounce off the wall and go the other way. That seems to be the consensus, at least from people that we've, we've had look at the area. And you actually did some sound testing too, didn't you? Uh, yes, Fred Hurwitz, uh, okay. the current chairman, uh, did some sound testing up there and they did decibel uh, readings mm -hmm. and they fell well within the range of uh, it wouldn't be uh, 
a disturbance to the community. And you have to, re not the, to the development, excuse me, you have to remember that there's only three or four houses in that immediate area that would catch the brunt of this. Mm -hmm. uh, the further, you, of course, you go away from that, you know, barrier, uh, where the sound uh, would be heard, uh, the less and less noise you hear. And uh, we even had a couple, one evening came from one of our meetings from Pinecrest, and the fellow and his wife got up and said, well, gee, we're at the other end. We'll never hear this. And they mm -hmm. got up and they left. They were satisfied. But we do have three or four uh, people uh, who are not very happy with it, and we're willing to listen to them. Uh, you know, if we're going to be neighbors, we want to be able to work with them. We don't want to uh, alienate anybody. And uh, we've extended the olive branch out to them to come and join us. And we have had good results. Uh, Mr. Doug Blaze, who resides in Pinecrest, has become a member of our committee uh, to work with us. And we're currently looking for one or two more from Pinecrest, and that just may happen. Well, that would be a positive thing. Yeah, it is, because, you know, if you work together and, mm -hmm. and you know, okay, what's, what's the main problem here? Mm -hmm. Let's see if we can address it. And that's the way we want to go about doing it. You're better off, we don't want a case where you have the Hatfields and the McCoys sure, over there. Yeah, so sure. You want to be able to get along. Sure. And by having them on the committee, uh, three of them on the committee or two or whatever it may be, uh, that would be a positive thing because they'll act as a liaison to the people up in progress. Well, you know, I have to be honest with you. I, I'm a little hard pressed to totally understand all of their opposition, and I know that the noise factor was has, has been the that's, big one. That's that been the produced. big one. And I mean, when you when you think about it, I mean, Riley Field, there's something going on all the time. True. You know, games and true, matches yeah. and so on, and the swimming pool, mm -hmm. um, which is full to capacity, particularly in weather like this. Um, you know, shrieking kids make a whole lot of noise. They do. Right? And you know, quite frankly, having had kids and dogs. The kids made a lot more noise than the dogs did, um, and you know, I suspect it's probably the same thing there. Um, you know, 500 kids at the pool are going to make a whole lot more noise than five dogs over at the dog park. So I, I'm kind of not getting all of their their commotion over this. Well, I, I personally believe that uh, it's not the entire development up there. It's just it's just. A couple of concerned people, very, very concerned people. Um, uh, they're going to be hearing noise also from 101 that yeah. comes across on the highway. Uh, I can hear 101 where I live at night. I don't think they hear, they hear too much noise, noise rather from Timbertown, mm -hmm. the old Timbertown anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I don't understand why it's, it's such a big thing. But again, I don't live there. They do. But we're willing to meet them uh, as, as more than halfway. If, let's just say yeah, the new decibel uh, readings that are taken, which I, I should mention beforehand, uh, we have a uh, sound engineer who is going to be coming down to, be, to do those decibel meetings uh, mm -hmm. here. Uh, because they weren't satisfied with the first one that you did. Correct? No, they weren't. They so they they want a professional. So that's try finding a sound engineer. Yeah. it's not yeah. easy. <laughs> yeah, so they're going to come down and conduct the test. And we have to it's pick. Be it, it, yeah, it's going to be an eight hundred dollar cost for us to pick that up. And it's again, it's the committee that's that has charge of get, you know, getting the funds mm -hmm. for that. So we're so we're going to do it, and hopefully those uh, decibel readings will be you know what they want to hear, and uh, from there we can probably move on. Let's but just, from what I heard though, the first sound tests were done pretty well. I mean, they were with they under were. the guidance of right. somebody who exactly. kind of knows all about that stuff. Well, he's one that both you and I know. You know. Yeah, he is an engineer, but he was on what you call a sound engineer. Mm -hmm. So th that's the the difference. But uh, they videographed this, by the way, videotaped the. Uh, oh, they did. They did. Yeah, wow. and that was showed. That was showed at the meeting that night at the con council meeting. And um, the residents still wouldn't accept that. No, um, as being uh, enough. In fact, Doug Blaze, who's going to be on our committee, had his own decibel readings, <laughs> and I joked a little bit. You would you get yours because they're louder than ours. But uh, the, the fair way to settle, to settle this is to have it done professionally mm -hmm. and solve that problem as far as the noise itself mm -hmm. is concerned. That's the main thing, I think. Well, I know the night of the council meeting, and again, and, and we all know, when people are at hearings and speaking in favor or in opposition to any issue, um, sometimes emotions can run high. Um, but I know the night of the council meeting, I was not there personally, but I was viewing it on BCTV. Okay. And um, Glad you were watching. I was indeed. <laughs> I was watching. And 
there were, you know, there was a fair amount of saber rattling going on from the neighborhood people. Um, you know, they were throwing out things like that they could sue the town and um, that there were covenants on the land and that you couldn't have the dog park there and the historical commission would be against it and their property values would go down the chute, which that one I totally do not understand. Um, but in any event, there, there was a fair amount of saber rattling. Some of those issues, I think, have already been resolved. Well, yes. Not? Let's begin with the uh, the uh, the law, law, lawsuit uh, right. and covenants. Uh, both Bart Mayer, our town attorney, mm -hmm. and Rick Sawyer, our town planner, reviewed that property with the microscope. They said there were no existing covenants there. Um, if you go back hundreds of years, <laughs> the Revolutionary War. I don't know how this came about, but there was there was something there from the I guess under the English crown uh, land that was deeded in one way or another. And we're supposed to worry about that, huh? Yeah. Well, there's two <laughs> acres there, and on one of the two acres, there's something there about no animals or something oh, of that okay. degree. And uh, so what we did was we we moved that area, and because we didn't need to have it there anyway, we just moved it over so we we would be out of there, and so that there would be no need to even you know hear this really. Uh, we we did win the uh, Revolutionary War, and <laughs> true, true. <laughs> that thing is, that's irrelevant anyway. But just so they wouldn't have a, a, a claim on that, we just moved that particular area. So that's that a non-issue. So that's a non-issue. And as far as the historical uh, commission uh, district is concerned, uh, we haven't heard anything uh, from them whatsoever. And what was your third point? Um, the the. Um the property values. They said their property values would be hurt. Yes, but I I, I don't see how that. And then would oh, lawsuits elsewhere. That um, there had been lawsuits against dark parks. Well, elsewhere. yeah, there was. A, I don't know the state, but uh, if uh, if Nancy was here, um, Sandy rather was here, she could answer that better than I could. But there was a lawsuit uh, where a uh, particular community sued the town over a dog park mm -hmm. and then they go to court and they the town won and the, the people who were fighting the dog park laws that's that's precedent setting in the sense well and you know I mean quite frankly and I know that 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 seemed to be a big issue at the council meeting that that all of this was going on at and, right, and yeah. uh, Chief <coughs> Dermody particularly seemed to respond you mean Bill, to that Bill Dermody. yes <laughs> he seemed to particularly respond to that and my thinking kind of was like, you know, you can't make decisions in town based on the possibility that maybe somebody will threaten to sue you. I mean, you, you know, you have to stand up and get counted well, on issues. Well, that's true because, you know, if this did turn into a lawsuit, it wouldn't be the first lawsuit we've had, and it certainly will not be the last uh, lawsuit that we'll ever have. Uh, I, I, I would think that when all is said and done, this mm -hmm. lawsuit issue is going to go away. Uh, Bill Dermody had the interest of the t of the town in mind mm -hmm. at the time. He was didn't want to see the town get sued, and I, I think he was caught off guard when that came up. Uh, you know, to his credit, I mean, I'm not gonna. Uh, I mean, I wasn't happy with that, you know, with that mm -hmm. decision, but mm -hmm. uh, nonetheless, he did what he thought was right at the time. So, so uh, a list of things were were handed down to us that we need to do, and uh, to continue this. And uh, one of the three uh, items that came up was, first of all, we need to have a 501c3 mm -hmm. uh, IRS ID Because there'll actually be what, like a... A, a fundraising... A, for the fundraising and also the town does not have to worry about overseeing this on a daily basis and so on, right? Your your group is going to be doing yeah, this. Yeah, I'll, I'll get into that in just okay. a moment. Okay. Uh, but, and of course, the sound engineering and... Uh, Bill being very concerned, one mm -hmm. of these three things completed. Okay. And to the best of my knowledge, they've all been completed. I'll know uh, when I talk with uh, Sandy Lamontang later, mm -hmm. uh, probably tomorrow. And if that has been completed, then we would we would have uh, completed our our uh, mm -hmm. task to undertake this, and it's done. So. Um, that, is that the point the council will actually take? Well, yeah, they, these are items that were holding back things, okay. and now these items have been addressed. So we're going to present this to the council, and uh, hopefully at that point in time, uh, we can uh, move forward with a motion to, to adopt the dog park at that location. And um, Now, not to interrupt you, but I understand you're not even trying to get a penny of taxpayer dollars either. No, no, absolutely not. And... Uh, <clears throat> 
but before I, but all right, I'll, I'll address that now. This is all being raised by donations, fundraising activities. Uh, we're going to be looking at large uh, corporations such as Home Depot, Lowe's, asking them for donations, materials, mm -hmm. supplies, and also in-kind donations where people come in and roll up their sleeves and say, you know what, I'll do this for nothing. For mm -hmm. example, putting up the fence if they want to donate their time. All of this comes in the, in the figures that I have here. This all adds up together. Mm -hmm. So we, we've looked into that and um, that's the route that we're going to go. As far as asking the taxpayers or anything, no. Now the Pinecrest people raised some very good questions like about who's going to watch this and who's going to oversee mm -hmm. this and this. And they were valid questions. So we've, we've decided at this point, uh, the, the committee anyway, I don't, this has nothing to do with the council or Parks and Recreation, we've decided that... But this if, will be part of your proposal. Right, it'll be part of our proposal okay. that, a, that a dog park commission be established. Mm -hmm. And on that commission, we would have our animal control officer, mm -hmm. Steve Paul. Makes sense. Okay, he'll be going there, who knows, probably two or three times a day. Mm -hmm. One member from Pinecrest that, we, that has already volunteered to go on there, Doug Blaze, mm -hmm. and yet another one, and then I have no problem, but another person from Pinecrest, because they're the ones that have the, the greatest concern here. So if you have this, they would probably have to meet like once every four months and uh, see what's going on. If there's mm -hmm. any problem, any vandalism, or anything that should be addressed, I'm sure Steve and Paul uh, won't hesitate to let us know there's something going on uh, at the site. Mm -hmm. uh, if there are complaints of uh, anything that could possibly happen there, kids playing in there mm -hmm. that, sure. I, that don't belong there or whatever. You have that in all the parks in town anyway, but I mean, yeah. you know, they could probably just decide to go there and do something like that, just as an example. But uh, this would all be addressed by that commission. Now, from everything that I've heard, um, and for those of you who are following it, you've probably seen that that you folks have already uh, made some concessions. Yes, um, for yes, example, in what the hours of operation right, and such would be. Do you want to talk about any of that? Yeah, well, originally the park was going to open at you know, sun up to sunset, and uh, mm -hmm. sun sun up in the summertime can be awfully early, and that was discussed. And we've backed that up to nine o'clock. So that's that, and that's that, that's a that, really reasonable hour. I mean, pretty much. Yeah. The I, world I believe is up so. by nine o'clock in the morning. <laughs> exactly, and um, they were they were concerned about. I mentioned the ledge earlier that mm -hmm. we were going to be doing some blasting, and mm -hmm. I, I don't know how that got started, but we're not going to be doing any blasting there. In fact, the one little piece of ledge that comes up will probably do something decorative uh, with that piece of ledge. Um, so this isn't going to be some like uh, big construction project, oh, like no. the road projects, no, for example. No. We've there'll be no blasting. Um, like there'll be no blasting. Uh, trees that need to be removed. Yes, you have to saw them down. That'll mm -hmm. create a little noise, but that's something. But from what I understand, not that many trees. Not that right? many at all. No. Just a handful. Something Just like what that. needs to be taken out of mm -hmm. the way. And uh, we also plan on uh, planting some trees mm -hmm. up on the, going up that hill. Uh, so that we have even more uh, of a barrier for these people above. Let's just say all of this isn't enough. Mm -hmm. uh, we've talked about getting some sound fencing mm -hmm. like they use at the airport for some of the people. You wouldn't need that much of uh, fencing to take care of that problem. Well, would that be up on the hill somewhere? Yeah, it would be up on the hill with their property. You probably need three sections, I think. At, at so visually it wouldn't phase them from looking out no. the windows or anything, I take no. it? No, no. Okay. I, no, I don't. It, and also, I'd like to point out that I didn't even mention this. And uh, this is actually two dog parks in one: one for small dogs, and the other one for large dogs. That's neat. It's one big circle of black chain link fence, four inches into the dirt, six feet high, and you'll have, of course, a center ah, fence. Ah, so they can. Right, exactly. They can't pull like what right, Marty did right. to me a little <laughs> early, is zooming away. <laughs> well, no, the reason for, the reason for this is big dogs uh, will play rough sometimes. They could oh, un yeah, unintentionally yeah. harm another dog. Yeah, a little one. Yeah. But let me talk about some of the the positive features of this dog park, and it is it's a way of socializing your dog with other dogs. Uh, that's a problem for many people, and it's also a place you can bring your dog take them off leash, let them run, mm -hmm. 
Unless he's off the leash, he's not on his turf. He's not going to defend anything. Mm -hmm. right. so he's, he's just going to have fun. So they're just going to. You know, Dogs are like kids. They exactly. love to get together. You know, and of course there'll be the there'll be items within the dog parks, like big, uh, say, beach ball or something of that nature mm -hmm. for dogs to play with. And when dogs figure each other out, okay, he's all right, she's all right, whatever. Yeah. If they just do their thing, yeah, you know, it, it, it reminds me. When I was a kid years ago. Uh, meeting some cousins I had never seen before, and I was jittery about meeting them. You know, after we got to know each other, ten minutes, God, we were raising hair yeah. all over the place. The parents had to, you know. <laughs> <Plenty> of <fun>. <laughs> so <laughs> it's going to be pretty much the same. <laughs> I know it's a heck of an example, That's but, true, but it's pretty much going to be the same scenario with, with dogs. They are sure. little kids. I guess they they they're they act like little kids. Well, yeah, they have the same and, enthusiasm and, and everything else. And I, I've heard that some of the, some of the some of the dogs we have, I have IQs of uh, well, that of a five about five or six year old. Oh, they do. Yeah, yeah, that's some smart. dogs. Yeah, they're smart yeah. animals. And, and this uh, will be great for the seniors in yeah. town because folks who can't really go down the street pulling that leash or mm -hmm. whatever, you know, they can go over, sit on the bench, exactly. let the dog get its exercise sure. and have fun, right. and meanwhile, they have a chance to chit-chat with some other folks in that's town. That's true. And you we know. will have benches in the Yeah, uh, I know. That's parks, neat. You know, so that's I'll, neat. They'll be able to sit down. And there'll be water available. There is already water there, by I the know. way. That's, have to yeah, the hydrants right there, right? right? Yeah. Uh, and as far as disposal and waste, uh, we're going to hire prior, a private firm to take care of that. Mm -hmm. uh, Jim Stanford uh, mentioned they could probably do it, but... We don't want to have any anyone don't complain that we're using taxpayer <laughs> dollars. So mm -hmm. if we pay for it ourselves, that's eliminated, and I think that's the way we're going to go. Well, said. I think that our listeners um, and and viewers, I should say, not listeners. This is TV, <laughs> not radio. Um, I think you've done a, a super job of kind of of summarizing it all. And as you can see, time is fleeting. Is there a last thing you'd like to get across to people and for people who believe that they would like to see a dog park, should they go to the council meeting that it's on when it's on the agenda? I would urge them to attend. Yes, I would. Okay. And uh, or contact or counselors. Con contact counselors. Okay. And uh, this is something I don't believe is going to hurt the community in any way. You know, when people look to move into a community, mm -hmm. they want to know what's there. And if you have a dog park there, that's a plus. It's not a minus. Mm -hmm. Okay? That's a good thing. And keep in mind that we have no place at this time where you can take your dog off a leash legally, mm -hmm. okay, and let him run. You're right. Except your own backyard, if you have a fenced in back, I don't know, fenced in or invisible fence, whatever you may have. And you'll have something, a place you can go to and allow your dog to run and have fun and mix and mingle and do their thing. Well, I think we were very fair. I think we let people know what the opposition had to say. And Norm explained it well, and he explained well how they're addressing what the opposition has to say. So all of you, um, I, I strongly suggest get to the council meeting, um, watch the agendas for when it comes up. It should be coming up fairly soon, I think. It should be. And meanwhile, you can communicate with your, your council members and let them know how you feel about a dog park. Thank you so much. Well, thank and, you for having me. You know, see you around the dark park soon, I hope. Will do. Okay. <laughs> thank you, Norm. Pleasure. And to everybody out there, thank you for watching the show. And um, meanwhile, until the next time, tell it like it is on every issue that you're thinking about. Bye-bye.